What's going on YouTube? How's everybody doing? This week I got a lot of stuff to do, not a lot of time to do it. Got to get everything ready to go for this weekend so we can load up and head down to the beach. So I got the wife's bike back on the lift. If you see here, there's a slot sticking up. It's not supposed to be sticking up. There's a tang in, under here. When I put these wheels back on after getting the powder coated, I apparently put this caliber bracket in the wrong spot. So now I gotta pull the axle out of this thing, drop this wheel, get the caliber bracket in the correct spot, and get this thing back together, make sure the chain's lubed and tight, and ready to go. On top of that, got some oil, and I got a filter. I, like, I went with a K&N filter because I like how they have the little nub at the end for a wrench. I've heard a lot of people that run Yamaha bikes like to run Yamaha lube. So, <laughs> Yamaha lube it is. Got to get this thing in the air, get the oil drained out of it, get that filter changed. Now, while it's not completely necessary to lift this bike back up in the air, it just makes it easier on me so I don't have to bend down and do this all on the floor. I don't really care to bend down like that in the first place, so I'm going to do it up at chest height if I can. All right, so I got my handy dandy 12 millimeter wrench. And try to get it up under here. They don't want that coming loose. Try to do this one handed without getting any mess spilled anywhere. Oh, there we go. Now that oil looks pretty good. Now that fil filter's tucked up under there, so I'm gonna try to get it off next. I don't know if you can see, but she's on there pretty good. So let's try to go get the filter wrench, see if I got one. So this thing's mostly drained out, found a filter wrench. All right, so I'm gonna go put this drain plug back in. They had it pretty snug from the factory, so I kind of snugged it down myself. It's not too, too tight. Should be able to get it back off without breaking anything. Now, it's time to get this oil filter wrench on this oil filter and try to break it loose. Gotta make sure to wipe everything back off so there's no big mess to clean up afterwards. All right then, that thing was way too tight. There's no reason that thing should have been so tight I barely got it off with the wrench. I don't know if you could see, but I started to flat spot the thing with the wrench. I'm not a professional mechanic, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to have them on there that tight. I'm not gonna put the other one back on quite so tight. I mean, I'll snug it up, but I'm not gonna he-man it on there. So let this drain for a little bit more. Uh, let's go get the other filter and compare and make sure it's the same thing. Because my luck, old Google told me this filter and it's not going to be the right one. Looks right to me. Let's go figure out what size nub this has got on it. Mm, what size do you think this is? Seventeen. Sitting over here. 17. Don't forget, take a little oil. I'm just gonna use this because it's fairly decent stuff. Take a little oil on your finger. Go around the new O-ring. Make sure the O-ring has a lot nice and nice and looped up. I'm gonna stick my head in here. I'm gonna wipe off the mating surface. And then put this one back on. Give her another quick wipe. <clears throat> Slide my drain thing out of the way. Grab my wrench. Go ahead and give her a little bit of a 
Let's see. Grab it up here by hand. Can't loosen it by hand, so that's gonna be plenty for me. Now, this time, if it's a little bit tight, I should just be able to take this wrench, pop it right back off there. So now, we have completed the oil filter, put the drain plug back in. We should be able to pull the cap, fill back with oil. There we go, right over here. It's got a sight glass right down here to tell you when you got enough oil in it. Well, I gotta find a funnel now that fits that so I don't make a giant mess. What do you think, the old orange one do pretty good? We'll go ahead and give her a quick wipe job with this rag before we put our oil in it. Quick wipe down, pretty well clean. Fits down in there, grab a yellow lube and we'll fill her up. Little knuckle. Yeah, I don't know why it popped all the way in like then. Usually they just cave in a little bit and you can grab it. So we'll go ahead and toss that back down there. Manufacturer states 2.2 quarts is what it's supposed to take. So we'll go ahead and put two quarts in it. Didn't even take the full two quarts, but the filter's not full if I'm not mistaken. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up the last bit of this quart. And I'll just let this drain into this for a little bit. Take your cap, make sure you ain't got no big mess anywhere. Now we're good to go. That only took, I don't know, probably 20 minutes tops. And a little bit of that was because I had the camera out and it makes things a little bit slower. I'm trying to make sure you all get to see what I'm doing. Anyways, that right there looks way worse than that right there. That tells me that it was about time it needed an oil change. I know it's only got 300 miles on it, but we're going to the beach here in a little bit and I'd rather not take no chances. I mean, it's easier to do it now than to do it then. So now, we're gonna go look in an RV. We're gonna go borrow an RV from somebody. We're gonna go look at that. And when I get back, that back wheel's coming off and that caliper bracket gets getting fixed. All right, guys, it's the next morning. Today's first day of school for the kids. Took them, dropped them off and everything. Come back and uh, did a little morning routine, you know, and got ready for the day. Now it's time to get back out here, get to work. Last night, I didn't get a chance to do anything else to this R3. We, uh, we went and looked at that RV. Something to go borrow, you know. Not sure that I really wanna go borrow that thing. RVs are uh, big creatures that uh, I don't know about taking an RV, borrowing it, cause you know, two hour trip there, two hour trip back, or an hour and a half, whatever it might be. And a 30 foot camper, not a camper, a 30 foot RV, you know, you're kinda stuck. If you get broke down or something, you're you're stuck. She said, the lady that owns it said she's got a um, some type of a towing camper service or something that they'll come get it and tow it for them. But if it breaks down and I got it, I'm responsible for that and I gotta fix it. You know, that's just the way raised, you know? So, them things are expensive to fix or heaven forbid something happen and something fall on it and it start cave the top in and start leaking or something. And I don't know, it's just a lot. So we'll see. Uh, we're going to Florida next week and then the weekend after that, we'll be headed to go camping. So it is what it is. Time to move on to this bike. I gotta get this back tire off there and get this caliper fix. So that was way harder than it needed to be. I don't, one handed, I needed something to jack up underneath of it to maybe hold the tire up and kind of get it into place. So you get this caliper on the tang that it's supposed to sit on in there. 
because uh, for some reason messed that up the last time. On top of getting this rotor to slide up in the caliper, maybe I could have took the caliper off and then making sure the chain was in place and then the axle went through the whole thing all at the same time is quite a bit of a challenge. I guess when, especially when you don't know what the heck you're doing, I guess. I'm not a motorcycle mechanic. I just do this for a hobby, you know? Anyways, I'm gonna get this tightened up, wipe this bike down a little bit, kind of give her a quick uh, once over and pray that I'm done with this thing. So I just used some all-purpose cleaner and uh, I think it's orange cleaner or something. I'm not sure. Used some all-purpose cleaner, got the wheel kind of halfway cleaned up. I'm going to go back over it with a little bit of soap and water and kind of once more, make sure I didn't leave any of this residue on there. Basically it, she can wash the bike here before we load the trailer and uh, I'll wash mine and everything else because mine is a little dirty. That's just the nature of it. When you have kids and you ride and you don't have a lot of time to clean stuff up and everything else and you got project after project after project going it happens so ready to get these cleaned up and get them loaded in the trailer in the next couple days i gotta pull mine up here when my old guest gets here and do an old change on mine too and this is what it is so i'm gonna get back after it There it is. She should be ready to ride. Other than needing a bath and getting put in the trailer, she's ready for Florida. Let's check the oil level when she's sitting flat. Mayor got her a little over full, but there's nothing in the oil filter. Well, there we have it. She's hair low so I need to go get another quart of fluid from the Yamaha shop here in a second go ahead and add a little bit of a probably about a eighth of a quart quarter of a quart at the most dump that fluid that came out of it in my oil barrel and get it out of the way you clean up some of them out she clean up some of the mess and get my bike up on the lift and we'll go from there I guess and just shortly after I get all that done, before I get moving on my bike, got to run down to the garage, Dad, start working on that trailer because I got to get it ready. It's not the trailer brakes aren't working on it, so I got to go try to fix the trailer brakes, make sure the wheel bearings and all are lubed up and tight and everything else, so we don't have any problems, preventable problems that is. So let's go. So I'm on my phone right now. I went to go take the battery out of the GoPro, and this happened. It swelled up real like that got all puffed up and got stuck in the camera i guess when i tried to wiggle it out with the pull tab the whole top come off so i had to demolish the top of this thing try to get it out of the camera now this battery is toast uh, i only have one other battery that battery earlier today went from 50 percent battery to zero percent battery while i was filming so i don't think that battery is any good anymore i don't know what to do i don't really have the money to go buy a new gopro i'm not sure anybody stocks Hero 8 batteries, maybe Best Buy. I don't know. I guess I'll try to go find a battery for this thing and I'm not even sure what to do. So, <laughs> well, it was me. My luck is terrible. <laughs> Got some new batteries in the camera they're just some amazon whatever 35 bucks for a set of three with a little charging thing it'll work till it don't 
it'll get me by. At least I have three batteries instead of two, like I did before. Um, I didn't try this battery again. I figured I'd let it rest for a couple days and then I'll give it a charge and making sure uh, it wasn't bad or anything. Anyways, I got my bike now on the lift. It's ready to do an oil change on it. Oil came in today, filter I had from the other day. So yeah, let's get this oil changed so I can get it down to the dad's house, clean it up, and put it in the trailer. Slide it under there. Look at that, 17 even fits the drain plug. Cannon filter, always had good luck. Modal, 4T, 1040. This is what was left over last time I did an oil change, so I'm gonna put it in first and then use whatever's left in that to fill it up. Pretty red, look at that. If you also look, it shows the K&N logo right out the side. So it just looks pretty cool. And there you have it. That's all ready to go. If we look on the sight glass right here, it measured just about full when I did it before. So well, I'm just gonna fill it up till it's about uh, at the very top of that. We should be all right. When we start it up, it'll suck some of it into the oil filter and drop it down a little bit. We can top it off after that. So that bad boy's full. That was about where it was, maybe a little lower when I uh, had it up on the stand before. So when you're flat, it drops just a little bit. When we start this bad boy up, it's gonna suck some fluid into the oil filter, so it's gonna drop in anyway. So let's start her up. And See now, after we started, the fluid's way down here. We'll just give this thing a couple minutes to make sure it's not gonna go up really anymore. And if it doesn't really rise at all, we'll go ahead and top her back up, put the cap back on, we're done. We got the trailer, truck, Suburban, whatever you want to call it, hooked together, ready to go. Uh, was gonna film, but ran out of time. It's getting kind of dark and we need to get all the bikes in there strapped down and ready to go. Uh, they are all in there, strapped down and ready to go. Open up, Uno, Dose, and Trace. Got all three of them in there ready to go. Now all three of the bikes are strapped down on all four corners and pulled pretty tight. So they shouldn't really move side to side or anywhere. I wanted to make sure that they're pulled against the wheel chocks and the backs are strapped down so it wouldn't bounce side to side or anything. I don't want any bikes falling over. I don't want any damages to occur. Uh, so it is what it is. We're gonna check it a couple times before we get out of town, but basically we're ready to go. Gotta got do some packing and stuff tomorrow to get ready to leave. As soon as they get off work and get here, we're loading luggage in, loading butts in seats, hitting the road. So we left off last night with this hooked to that, ready to go but I forgot there's a thermostat on the side of this transmission that doesn't function the way it really should. So these things run a little bit hot transmission fluid wise. So towing that trailer with this Suburban through the mountains could cause the fluid to overheat or stay a little bit hotter and cook the transmission a little faster than would otherwise. So I went ahead and unhooked the two, rolled it up here. So throw this thing up on ramps and get this little manifold thermostat housing off, get this thermostat changed and I guess we'll be ready to go. Hopefully now my tubby butt can get underneath of that. 
and get this manifold off there. Not sure which side this thing's on. Kind of got an idea what it looks like from a YouTube video. So let's do some investigating. You look up, these two lines going to the manifold. If you look at this right here, it's got like a hold down bar that holds these lines into this instead of that original style quick release. So hopefully, unbolt that, the lines will pop out, unbolt that, and the manifold will pop right off there. Broke this loose. Kind of missed a little bit. It's hard to maneuver around here. I got transmission fluid on my camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this manifold off there and I'll catch you at the bench. All right, so I got that manifold off there. Got you all cleaned up. That manifold came off pretty easy. As soon as I broke that bolt loose, pulled it out by hand, uh, just barely tugged on that manifold and it boop, popped right out of there. Here it is. I don't have any brake clean to really clean it up, so I'm gonna wipe it off with this rag. Ain't nothing to it. So, all right, next step is I gotta locate a set of snap ring pliers and yank this that bad boy apart. Looks like we need to remove this snap ring here. Easy peasy. Now we need another set of pliers to grab that and pop that out of place. Let's see, just so we're clear, should be able to grab this easily, just work it right out of there. Now this one, coming out of there, and then the bottom, there's a spring, and all it is, is a, a little manifold, the hole drilled straight through. Got two outlets. Here's the kit we got to replace what's in the thermostat housing. This kit is part number STL010. Open the box up, it comes with new top hat, new plunger, new spring, new O-rings, a ball bearing get the old handy dandy instruction booklet okay so o-ring o-ring ball spring that goes in first all right so should be pretty simple put that in spring ball top it uh-oh do not lose your ball bearing dropped you process of trying to retrieve this ball bearing so here's the ball bearing down in there plunger the top hat according to this here kit I put an o-ring in the first slot put an o-ring also in the second slot I need to get this back on the vehicle, get everything tightened up, ready to go, test drive it a little bit, and make sure it's not gonna leak on us because it could have easily pinched any of them O-rings because, you know, O-rings love to pinch. Got the thing back together. No leaks whatsoever. At least as far as I could tell, running it on the stand for a minute. Now, I'm gonna put a creeper back under there, drain the oil out of it, do an oil change so it's 100% oil life before we take a 1200 mile trip. We only made a little bit of a mess when we was draining the oil wasn't too bad of a job to do. That stuff's so thin, it ran out like water, shooting out of a water hose. All the way off, way past where I had the drain pan. But waiting on the filter now so I can tighten that up, throw some oil in it, and ready to hit the road. But uh, this is basically where I'm in the video off. We ain't got a whole lot left to do. We gotta put the trailer back on this after I lower the hitch down a little bit, make sure it's level. Gotta obviously put the oil in there first. Put the luggage in the back, hit the road. Like, comment, subscribe, and until the next time, I forget to see you all later.